Hey everyone, how are we all doing? So today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual because I recently posted a 73 questions with a math student, Vogue style, and in response to that I got a lot of questions about maths at university and university in general. So in response to your response, I asked on my Instagram if anyone had any questions to do with university and I'm going to answer your questions very exciting for me because I've never done this kind of video before. For those of you who have watched my other videos, I am working on lots of vlogs, don't worry, lots of university content coming soon, but since my vlogs take a very long time and since I'm trying to put out as much content as I can for you right now during these uncertain times, I am doing this in the meantime while I edit some other vlogs so that I can hopefully help if you have any questions that you wanted answering. So with that being said, let's get to the questions. So, if I can find my phone, here we go. So I have a bunch of questions from Instagram. Ooh, what is this bit of hair doing? So I have a bunch of questions from Instagram and then I'm also going to address some frequently asked comments that I get on my videos. Although before I start, I am just filming in my bedroom. I'm very dependent on the outside lighting and it keeps changing. I'm very sorry about it. It's as annoying for me as it is for you. So we're all just going to have to collectively deal with that. It's just done it again. Um, so yeah, I'm very sorry about that. I'm doing my best with what I've got. I've tried to strategically do the blinds. It's not really working. Lighting is not one of my talents. So first of all, I have some questions from Instagram, so I'm going to get to those now. The first question is, how many hours do you study in a day? I get asked this a lot. I am a master's student and I study maths, so that means that I have eight or nine contact hours a week. That's lectures and tutorials and that kind of thing, although we don't really have tutorials anymore. But um, yeah, eight or nine of those a week. And the short answer to this is <laughs> a lot. Um, beginning of term, I'd say about five hours towards the middle and end of term, five hours a day, not in a week, that really would not be very much, um, towards the middle and end of term, probably like eight or nine hours a day. Yeah, but I guess that's standard for any degree. Uh, when you get into the later years, there's a lot to do. And there are also days where I do absolutely nothing, so. How does the dissertation choosing process work? So, I don't know if I said at the beginning, of, I must have said it, I'm a master's student, I did do a dissertation this year, slash I'm doing one because it's not finished yet. For me, because I was already at Exeter in third year, at the end of third year we got given a list of all the supervisors and all the project titles and you reached out to the ones that you were interested in. We picked our projects over the summer. We were reaching out to lecturers and we started working on them when we came back in September, um, although it might be slightly different for the masters that's a standalone, so I'm sorry, I don't really know how that works, but that's how my dissertation choosing process worked. What A-levels did you do? I did maths, further math, chemistry, and French, and on that topic, do you need further math A-level? The short answer to that is no, you do not need further math A-level to do maths at uni, and that's a really big misconception. It's definitely helpful, and if you can take it, do. <laughs> um, but in my degree course, they taught it without the expectation that people had done that. So in term one, there was a little bit of overlap with first maths A level. Although I will say if you haven't done it, you might have to do some independent work to, to learn some of that stuff on your own. Um, but I knew a lot of people who didn't have first maths A level and they've still done really well. So it's definitely not a requirement. What time do lectures start? Technically at Exeter the earliest they can start is at 8.30 but like a lot of universities we have recap which is lecture recordings that go online so you don't even need to be at your lecture, you can just watch them from the comfort of your own bed if you want to so um, yeah, they start whenever you want them to. How do societies work? So societies at university are student-run organisations and there's probably a society for just about anything you can think of. There are sports societies, language societies, business societies or career-related societies, baking societies, going out for cocktail societies, literally whatever you can think of. And the way it works is you go to your freshers' fair at the beginning of the year. I vlogged mine this year if you want to check out that video and see what it was like. And you sign up for your societies, there's usually a joining fee to pay or you can join online. And then you're part of the society and you go to your weekly training if it's sports or whatever events are being held. It's usually, communication is usually through social media. So you might want to have Facebook so you can join the Facebook groups and things like that. 
and they'll also email you about any events happening. That's societies. And on that note, I have a question here that's asking, what was the whole cheerleading audition process like? So if you haven't watched my videos before, I am in the cheerleading society. I auditioned for one of the teams that performed at the Exeter City Football Club Stadium. We learnt a dance, did it in front of the girls who were running the society and then showed them a couple of stunts. I don't know if anyone's watched Cheer on Netflix but you know when they like lift them up and like that kind of thing. That's a stunt. It was a very supportive environment. The girls who ran the auditions were really lovely and then they email you if you got in or not and you can definitely go for it even if you've never done it before. So I had never done cheerleading before this year but I still got onto a team because they have teams of different levels and I think that's true for all sports societies that they have all teams of different levels. So if there is a sport that you've never tried before that you want to have a go at or any other society, um, I would definitely encourage you to give it a go at university because it's a really good opportunity to try something new, learn something new, and who knows when you'll get that kind of opportunity again. I have a couple of questions here about accommodation, so I'm going to answer those next. First of all, what were the main factors you had for choosing accommodation? So in my first year, I was in an accommodation that shared one shower between 14 people. I'm going to say that again, 14. That was not the most pleasant year of my life. I'm not going to lie, it wasn't as bad as I'm like making it out to be, I'm being very dramatic. But um, yeah, it still wasn't like the nicest thing, although I was lucky I had a good group of people that I was sharing with. Um, but after that, one of my factors was that I wanted to share a bathroom with fewer than 14 people. That was one thing, whether you want an ensuite or not, it's definitely something I took into consideration. And the other thing, by the way, 14 is definitely a worst case scenario. I would have been very happy to share with like two to four people, but 14 was a lot. Um, the other thing I take into consideration is self-catered or catered accommodation. So in my first year I was catered and it was breakfast and dinner that, that we went to dining halls for. But personally I prefer self-catered um, because then you get a kitchen and it's a nice like social environment when you're sharing a kitchen with your friends. Not that dining halls aren't social but it's nice to have your own kitchen and it's nice to be able to make your own meals instead of being dependent on whatever they're serving. So that's something else to take into consideration. Um, what else do I have? That accommodation let's take a look what accommodation did I live in in Exeter in my first year I lived in an accommodation that I think has been demolished <laughs> it was that bad but it was near Berks Grange for anyone who's curious and the question I've been asked here is like specifically um, asking about extra accommodation so if I had the choice I would probably go for La Frauda. the other one they've mentioned is Berks Grange um, I actually lived close to Berks Grange and it was a really nice accommodation but it was at the bottom of an enormous hill called Cardiac Hill and I mean if the name doesn't put you off then <laughs> then you'll probably be fine but for me I didn't enjoy having to walk up that hill every day so that is something I would take into consideration. La Frauda is definitely closer to lectures. Um, that was a very extra specific question though. <laughs> Best places to eat on campus. So first of all there are loads of places to eat on campus. My favourite is every other Friday all the food trucks from in town come and set up at the top of the hill and they've got food from all different cultures, all different price ranges, they make it in front of you. It's, it's a good time so that's probably my favourite uh, food on campus when it's there. Um, how lenient is Exeter with their grade requirements? I don't know if this means application wise or once you're at university. Once you're at university, all universities are held to a very similar standard, so one university isn't more lenient than any other. Um, and every piece of work you do is like marked, marked by a second marker. Some external person will come in and make sure that our university is doing similar things to other universities, so it's very fair um, across the board. In terms of their intake, so like the A levels you would have to get. Um, my offer was three A's, um, I think it depends what your degree subject is, but yeah, I think it's, as far as entry requirements go, it's obviously not like the very top entry requirements. My extra was actually my backup, my first choice was three A stars, so that's like, you know, it's more lenient than that I guess. But yeah, I think it's a pretty standard kind of offer as far as maths goes. Okay, done that one, done that one. Got a question here that's just a heart. Thank you, heart back. 
Oh, I've got a question here about the computer science labs. So this is asking what the equipment is like at Exeter specifically. I did a computer science module in third year, but I am probably not the best person to ask for this because I prefer to work with my own laptop at home rather than working on campus or at least I'll work on campus, but I don't like to use the campus computers, although they have lots of them. Um, but yeah, so I'm not the best person to ask. I don't really know how the campus computer labs are, except for the fact that they seem to work <laughs> the very few times I was in there. But I will say whatever software it is that you need. So I used Python for the computer science module that I did. They did explain to me how to like install all the software and there were labs where you could go ask people for help and the lecturer was very willing to help as well with programming. So yeah, I'm not really sure. I would, I think the resources are fine. If anyone watching this does Computer Science Exeter, comment down below and let this person know how you find the computer labs because I think they're fine. Uh, can you recommend a book? Um, I don't know if this means like, a, I'm assuming this means a maths book. I would say to get into maths, I, before starting university, I read a book called something like Why Do Buses Come in Threes? It was something like that, which was all about maths in everyday life, but it wasn't technical at all. So um, that was a really interesting one just to see how it applies to things. But in terms of like a fiction book that has some maths in it, I would recommend The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. I am actually using that book to prop you up right now. Um, but yeah, that was a fun, well, that was a book that had some math in it, but it's just a fictional story. Um, so yeah, those are my book recs. Could you share study tips and how you study maths? The number one thing that helps me is that I try and break everything that I need to do down into very small achievable goals. So like instead of telling myself I need to work on my dissertation, which I do, <laughs> I'm filming this video instead. But yeah, instead of just saying work on my dissertation because that's such an overwhelming piece of work for me, if I just think about it like that, I just won't even open it because I don't even know where to start and it scares me. So instead I'll tell myself like for today, just get this one little thing done or just have a look at this one page and do some of the corrections and things like that or just look up this one concept you know what I mean instead of saying work on my dissertation which is such a vague like how do you even begin you know I hope that made sense that helps me and also things like just keeping my workspace clear asking people for help when I need help um, talking to lecturers I never used to do that before this year it has helped me so much uh, yeah, I think that's what I would say to that. How easy is it to find a seat in the library? Depends on the time of day. If you get there early, easy. Um, if you get there between like 11 and four, especially if it's towards the end of term or exam season, then very difficult, it gets very full. But there's plenty of workspaces on campus and I think that's probably a standard answer for any university library, that there are times of the day when it's very busy. Getting there early, um, and then you'll be fine. Right, we're almost at the end of the questions. Can you take modules from other departments or years? Yes, you can. So I did a computer science module in my third year. The only risk with that is that different departments might work in different ways. Like our business school has a different way of choosing modules than the rest, than my maths department. Um, so yeah, and you might need specific requirements. And this year I am taking a module from third year even though I'm a master's student because you can also take modules from years below as long as your credits add up properly. Um, I'm not going to get too much into credits and everything because I feel like every university has a slightly different system. But yes, you can take modules from different departments from different years as long as all your credits add up. Uh, at the end of the day, you can do that if you want to. And the very last question I have is what jobs can you do with a maths degree? So many so many. It's a really big misconception that maths doesn't apply to anything. I can understand how if you've only done it in school you might be like when would I need Pythagoras's theorem in real life kind of thing. But off the top of my head you can go into finance, technology, anything to do with weather and climate, um, data science is a huge one right now, consulting, probably loads more than that, security, anything to do with like cryptography. I mean I'm sure we're all watching a lot of Netflix right now the way that they're recommending you what to watch next, that is data science, and you can do that with a maths degree. Um, consulting, any kind of consulting in finance or technology, digital consulting, uh, data analytics, 
I don't know, there's so many things you can go into with maths and those are just off the top of my head and also those are very much like things we've actually done in lectures directly apply to that but the advantage of maths is that it's not just about what you do in lectures but it's about teaching a way of thinking. It's definitely something that employees look for is that we're taught how to think in a certain way so you can definitely go into careers that have nothing to do with maths but because we've been taught like a certain way of problem solving, a certain way of thinking, um, your degree can apply to that as well. Contrary to the opinion that maths doesn't apply to anything, I would say maths applies to a lot more than you think it applies to. So yeah, definitely good career prospects. I think that was all the questions I had. Thank you very much for everyone who sent in questions. I hope this has been useful and I will get back to the vlogs and the university content. I have a room tour coming soon, lots of vlogs all the content. Hope you're all staying safe and I will see you in the next one.